Hi, right, welcome to the uh, second video for the phylum Annelida. Annelida um, are often referred to as uh, segmented worms, and you can see the segments in these um, images. Uh, and as I was uh, mentioned in the first video, you'll be responsible for the class names Oligochaeta, which are the earthworms, Hyrudinae, which are the leeches, and you'll see this one is actually um, being used medically as they are now to reduce swelling. And finally, Polychaeta, which are um, the marine and freshwater worms, uh, typically which have these um, appendages on each segment. So as before, uh, Polychaeta, um, which we'll look at in more detail now, it means many hairs, poly for many, and kite or site uh, is another word for hairs. Again, learn these roots and you will um, find reading about science very much easier. Okay, so uh, they are, they have essentially radiated out into almost every marine habitat there is. Um, and uh, they live as carnivores, suspension feeders, grazers, deposit feeders, parasites. So they've adapted to many, many different habitats in the uh, marine environment and are very important, especially when you start learning about sediment um, chemistry and sediment ecology in later years. Uh, so we'll have a look at um, some of the um, more interesting features of New Zealand polychaetes. Uh, when we start looking at polychaetes, um, you'll note that they're very segmented and that the segments essentially are repeating structures. They look very similar from one segment to the next. Now, that uh, is has an exception at the end, at the posterior end, and at the anterior end. The anterior ed, end is the head, and that is called the prostomium. And um, it can take on very many different forms, which you'll have a look at in lab and in this video. And they also, a feature of all polychaetes, have uh, something called a cuticle, which is uh, the first uh, sort of outer covering that we see in um, the organisms that we are going to be looking at. And it's, uh, you could think of uh, almost wrapping something up in like a um, cellophane or a cling wrap. It's a thin um, membrane that is non-living, it's extracellular, and it um, helps them resist bulges for burrowing. It's got a protective function as well. So here is the diagram that I said uh, that goes along with almost every phylum. And if you can understand this, this diagram, you're most of the way towards understanding how annelids work. Uh, you'll see the defining characteristic is that they have repeating segments, okay? And each of the segments looks very much similar to the ones next to it, except for the last segment and the first two. If we start at the rear end, um, you'll see that there is the growth zone just in front of the um, just in front of the last segment and that is where segments are added so segments grow and uh, get repeated into that um, at the at the tail end of the uh, animal the segmental ganglion, that is the nerve cord. That's uh, just showing you the nerve cord that um, runs down the length of uh, the body on both sides. And um, there is also a uh, circulatory system that runs down the length of the body. Um, moving up, we see the setae and the parapodium. So the interesting thing about 
polychaetes compared to the other annelids, and as a precursor to limbs for um, possibly all animals, you see that these things have developed uh, essentially limbs from each segment that um, are modified in the different polychaetes to perform different jobs. And the reason they're called polychaetes or many hairs or cite or chite are the little hairs that are on the end of the parapodium. And if you see a segmented animal with appendages on both sides of uh, the segments uh, with little hairs coming off of them, then you know that you're looking at a um, annelid and a polychaete annelid. You'll see appendages coming off of something like a uh, caterpillar or a um, millipede or a centipede, but they are jointed limbs and they don't have the, um, they're, they're different in that they are jointed limbs and they're uh, part of an exoskeleton. Okay, whereas the polychaetes don't have an exo exoskeleton. Um, you'll see the, prostine, the prostomium, and that has several different um, organs that are modified for the various uh, polychaetes, in the various polychaetes for the habitat that they live within. All polychaetes have the same um, parts, the organs on the prostomium, uh, just modified in different ways. And we'll have a look at those as we go through the, uh, the rest of the, the annelid videos. So they have a brain, which as we've talked before, about before, is just an organizational ganglion, which is um, bigger than the smaller segmental ganglions. But a brain is just a collection of nerve cells working together to interpret um, signals that come into it from outside of the, from within the body and send signals out based on the signals that have come into it. So the, it will get signals from the eyes, from the antennas, from the palp, from the skin, from the CTA, those will come into the brain and be reinter be interpreted and sent out to cause actions within the body. Okay, so there's a mouth which starts the one-way digestive system. There are palps which are modified uh, into many different shapes that we'll see. There are antenna, and that may be one pair or it might be two pairs or four pairs and the same with eyes some of the um, uh, some of the annelids have many eyes and some have two eyes only and some have no eyes and here is another picture of the polychaete the typical polychaete now this one is a predator because you can see it, its jaws The pharynx is uh, something that can be everted from the, the head. So it's like a, a mouth that can come out and grasp prey. And we'll hopefully get to see that in action, if not um, in lab, but at Fidienga. You'll see the um, tentacles in this one are modified as sensory organs. Uh, the um, and then you'll see the segments starting and you can see how they repeat as the body gets longer and that moves down to the um, end of the body towards the last segment and the growth zone. You'll also see the parapodium, which in this case is modified uh, for moving through sediment. Okay, these uh, bristle setae help them get purchase on that sediment and push themselves forward.
Okay, this is uh, just a recap. You can read that, stop this video and read these. Here is a micrograph of CETE, and you can see how um, the pointy end of the hairs at the end of the peripodium would be very good for digging in and giving grip to the organism as it pushes itself forward. Uh, the, they have a blood vascular system, so very much like we have. It's a circular system, so the functions of this system are removing wastes, carbon dioxide, um, nitrogen, other metabolites, uh, the, essentially the wheeze are taken away from the organism, and oxygen is circulated. And as we saw in the flatworms, an organism can't get very big, very wide, uh, if it is too hard for oxygen to diffuse in from the outer environment. So it has to diffuse in through either gills or through um, the across the uh, the skin into the um, blood close to the skin and then circulated around through the um, vascular system. Polychaetes are amazing at regeneration. Uh, if you remember this scene from the Terminator when all of the parts of this Terminator uh, oozed back together after he was blown up, um, frozen, and then blown up by Arnold Schwarzenegger. So they, um, you've probably heard that you can cut an earthworm in half and both um, parts will uh, grow a new earthworm. That may or may not be true. Uh, they, they can heal segments and they can replace the ends, um, but what generally will happen is that they need to be able to do that if they they can only do that if they have enough energy reserves to grow the new parts of the body while it can't feed okay um sexual reproduction uh generally broadcast spawning uh they can also do copulation or something called her uh epitoki and in some of them they find budding, so we'll have a picture of those two. Okay, so this is epitoki, and um, hopefully we can see some of these in lab, but you can see the new um, the, um, budding individuals growing right off of the growth zone at the rear end of the body. Here's another picture of epitokes growing. Okay, a budding, and uh, you can read that on your own. Here is a um, epitope that's modified for swimming, and you can see the paddle-like uh, arms. Well, they're parapodia and setae that are very good for swimming, and this is essentially a big egg or sperm delivery system. And these are netted sometimes and eaten 